finally no. belated wasn't I it belated i don't no it's not belated um something arrived because it was a pre-order um i don't know where it is but uh dude there's a oh. bee there's a bee in your room be careful it's <laughs> it's a i don't think it's a bee uh, it's be beautiful what was it <laughs> beautiful it's, it's a it's a beautiful old man oh beautiful old man oh <laughs> And we got a cat. <laughs> this is going to be an awesome show, people. Some cat got jealous of the beautiful old man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's what it is, people. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for the next part. Hi, welcome everybody. This is the Post to Drop episode seven, and today I am with Matt Ferguson. Um, you know him from the Open Channel Vice Press uh, co-founder and also a poster artist extraordinaire. And uh, yeah, Matt, how are you doing, buddy? Not bad. I'm done. Yeah, yeah, that's Got a great. Spot on my face, which is driving me nuts, right there. Yeah, just just Such just lie. Knock, knock it out of the park, so people <laughs> won't care. Yeah, exactly, it's there. It's <laughs> Irritating yeah. on camera with a giant spot. Typical. Uh, let's let's put on some art then, maybe in a sec here <laughs> <laughs> to distract from that. Yeah. But yeah, we we are going to talk about your two Thor pieces that uh, one you did for the U.S. market and Regal Cinemas, I think it is, and uh, the That's other right. one for the um, Odeon UCI group uh, for ten pieces worldwide only. And also, uh, after that, we're going to talk about your upcoming print, American Werewolf in London, which has been released while we're doing this, uh, while this episode yeah. comes out. And so people yeah. can grab it. And uh, yeah, there's going to be uh, all kinds of editions. But yeah, let's start off with Thor. And we're going to start off with the US version. And the US version is uh, reminded me a lot uh, of uh, Star Trek. Is that where the inspiration came from? Not initially. That the rainbow wasn't on the initial concept, um, but it we went through lots of changes, and then mm -hmm. eventually we added the bifrost in. Mm -hmm. So originally it was just the characters and lightning and stuff, um, and then I just thought, oh, bifrost would be good, which turns out to be good because it's key to the movie as well. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, and then I just did it rainbow, and then I was like, oh, it's like. Star Trek. It's obviously just because I love that Star mm -hmm. Trek. Yeah, it's a classic poster. Yeah, <laughs> just in the back of my head, and I didn't even realize. And I was like, "Oh, cool." Yeah, yeah it works. <laughs> so sometimes happens, right? Is is there? Um, I mean, when when we look at the um, Euro version with all like different colors and uh, di di different kinds of uh, motif and concept here, um, is was that in a briefing basically? Like, I mean, do 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 both groups, for example, in this case, Odeon and Regal, do they know about the projects that you do too? And yeah, they know. They know. I make sure to um, keep them aware of both as well, and they know anyway internally because obviously they want some points of difference. And, yeah, and I do anyway as an artist. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I, I was wondering where where do you go in terms of differences? Is that I mean. I'm not gonna say um, I, I have to, but personally I have to say I like the Euro version more than I do the US version. But um, is there, there there's no preference because you're European, is there, or because it is limited um, or something like that? Because these are limited. I, to 10. I enjoyed both. I like the US one because it's sort of um, kind of like old school me in a way. At mm -hmm. one point we had it on a Dutch angle and it was really like, <laughs> oh yeah, that looks like a picture by me. Um, but they like the symmetry of the straight up and down, which, to be fair, does work straight up and down, same as the Star Trek poster. Um, and then, but the the European one is like I had the idea of doing the love heart motif with their heads. It's it's really subtle, but it is mm. there. Um, and so I quite I quite like that as a hook, and it ties into the story of the film. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a bit different to some of my other pictures because I like to change it up. Mm -hmm. uh, where where did the colors come from in the in the euro version i mean um the euro version it, color wise i was inspired again by bob peak specifically star trek 
3, his artwork for Star mm-hmm. Trek 3. There's like these sort of purpley hues mixed with pink for highlights and stuff and then like bluey in the in the in the other areas and it just creates this sort of cool 80s uh, sort of vibe. So yeah, again, just looking at old old posters and liking those things. Mm. I mean, uh, you did already get the Euro version, or was it is it a different one? Because uh, you posted uh, like a like a glimpse of it. Oh yeah, well, we've it. got a print sample. Yeah, hang on a sec. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> this this is live people, and we're gonna get a print sample to see here. There we go. Oh, this is this is shiny and cool. It's Man, the old that's... sort of. Um... That is pretty awesome. Shiny. Very much so. <laughs> yeah, I'll get my headphones back on. Yeah, so that'll be all sort of shiny and day glow and really in line with the movie that one. So I'm quite happy about that. That's pretty awesome. I mean, um, looking back at these, so you have seen the movie, you love the movie, and um, would you do something different in terms of the posters? Um, well, that I think maybe that's why I like now like the european one because of the love aspect because mm-hmm. that sort of ties into the film a lot more than um maybe they were hinting at with the trailers and stuff mm-hmm. um it's like got that romance yeah so i would probably in retrospect if i knew more which is fine um because they were meant to be teaser posters anyway but i would go more down the sort of love i'd make the love heart even more obvious i think Mm-hmm. And uh, would you also uh, maybe put in the love between uh, their tools, Hammer, <laughs> the Molnia and Stormbreaker? Oh, well, I was actually going to do that at one point. You were? So, okay. You know, like it's got those two, like with the sort of rocks and the portals and stuff. Yeah. At one point, it was just going to be the hammers and um, the asteroids coming out. Okay. Were the bits of Molnia, you know, because mm-hmm. it splits up and yeah, flies yeah, out. Yeah. So that was like. An earlier on thing, and and but it worked with just Minulia. I can't say it. <laughs> Mew <Mew-mew. Mew-mew. laughs> Worked with just Mew Mew, but then when you add in like the big Stormbreaker axe, it kind uh-huh. of offset it, so it didn't. It, like I had it as a cross. Okay, okay. A love heart cross. I had them together and or on top of each other, and they just didn't work compositionally. So then I made more work for myself, and I had to just put in. The all right, all right. Um, on the US version, what were the choices in terms of the background? Because you have like the like Saturn kind of like space. Um, oh well, that's angle. like that's the planet that from the beginning of the movie, basically, um, and that's just based on reference that they that they gave me. Oh, ah, okay. At okay. one point, um, I did have the you know the sort of Bifrost. Mm-hmm. Um, statue thing where 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 jane goes to get the hammer there's that mm-hmm. big monument thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, um okay. i did have that at one point but i'm kind of glad that i didn't because it's not really it's in the film for like maybe a minute and it's not really key mm-hmm. so i just liked the look of it and it was a nice framing device behind yeah the characters that was before we brought in rainbow perfect so, um that's awesome. And um, yeah, so these, I, I, did you get the, the real versions as well? Or is, did somebody send you also the I'm going to be getting ones? some, yeah, I, I, um, but I've not got them. And these samples are just samples. They're probably going to be destroyed because I'll have to get rid of them. Because so, <laughs> the, the European one, there's only those 10 copies. Yeah, so you cannot even keep the test print? No. <laughs> okay, they're, they're gone. I, I know that. <laughs> We're gonna burn them alive. On well, there, it's the lower show. quality anyway, so it's it's just like um, it looks good though. The fi- it looks good, like but up close, it's not the full quality because they don't okay. do the full litho with all the layers oh, stuff right, right. until it's been approved. It's just to see how it will print on the foil, basically. Right. That's so cool. yeah, cool, cool, cool though. Are, are you guys printing it or like with your in house like or the, the not in house but Vice yeah. Press? Yeah. Uh, no, Disney's sorting it out. Disney's sorting. All right. Well, I'm see. talking to the printers, so it's like I get to choose the paper and everything. So. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So, what 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 are you going for? Like, is it just foil, or is it gonna everything is gonna be foil, right? So, leaking spot <laughs> juice everywhere. Beautiful. <laughs> Gross. Um, but... It is gonna be foil at the moment. It's not got anything else on it, but I might do sort of like some white bits in to sort of differentiate the foil a bit more i've not decided fully mm-hmm. still okay. in the process of going through all that 
All right, all right. So is there going to be an official Thor Love and Thunder print for more people than just 10? Not of that artwork, but there might be one at some point uh, with bottleneck. All right, all right. That's that's the why US. they teased it. <laughs> yeah, but it, it just depends on whether yeah. it gets like approval because obviously it's kind of been done as promotional. But in the past, once the promotion's done, hmm. it becomes like a studio asset and then they can use it for commercial products anyway. So it might it might come out. As yeah, a screen yeah. print. Fingers crossed. I mean, you maybe a timed run as uh, the Empire uh, version, uh, Empire Strikes Back yeah. version. You did maybe, uh, which was official key art. Maybe maybe one of the earlier iterations of the poster to differentiate it. Because I've done that before when I did Captain Marvel mm -hmm. screen print version. We put back in some of the stuff because. That the giveaway for that was like a small little A4, mm -hmm. and there was more things in like some spaceships and stuff. But we took them away because when it's small, it's not gonna work as well. But when we go big, mm -hmm. put more detail in. So we might do, I might do a bit of that. All right. I do do a screen print, like just change it up a bit and add a bit more back in of the extra details. Sounds very good. So the so... giveaway in the US is like eleven by seventeen. Yeah. It's smaller. So yeah, fingers crossed that this is going to happen. And uh, what definitely is going to happen is uh, on Wednesday, as I said before, the American Werewolf in London um, yep. print. This is what I'm showing right now is the reg version. And um, then we have a variant, uh, which has no like no border that is uh, mm -hmm. can be seen here. And then we also have a open, I think it's the open edition with the red border, yep. right? Small um, size, so yeah. Open edition uh, is probably what? What was it? A two? Is that is that a two size? A two. That's right. Yeah. And yeah, they, they are going to be available for a little bit longer and uh, bigger size than the others. Do you know the the run? Because I think we didn't talk about it on the open channel. Two hundred something like that, and then a hundred and something for the variant. They're going to have um, spot varnish on as well, so the blood should be shiny, which is good. Oh, shiny. okay. So it like looks like actual blood. Hopefully, that's the idea. I mean, it's fun to do that sort of stuff anyway. Yeah, that's that's going to look awesome. Um, So what was the idea here? I mean, American Werewolf has been done by Vice Press before, but this is your version. And um, what's... Yeah, I just, I just wanted to do like something old, you know, like an old film and do some sort of vintage poster stylings. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I just did it. I just did this one for myself, really. Mm -hmm. We've got the license, and I love the movie. Um, and then I couldn't come up with any really good ideas other than I really wanted the teeth uh, making, like, London. Mm -hmm. That was, like, an idea, having that motif, and then them they're going into, you know, the more of the beast. And then it was actually Flory who came up with the idea, because I had the title different. But Flory came up with the idea of doing London with the eyes. Yeah, and then that just set it off because I could do the pool of blood. <laughs> and then James said, "Oh, the blood looks a bit like Britain." <laughs> oh yeah, that's like true. The, and I was like, "Oh well, okay, yeah, I didn't do that on purpose, but it does. It's Britain, yeah." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's nice. That's a nice touch, yeah, right there. And um, yeah, so the I, I, um, I think these would look like the eyes would probably look pretty cool, like the embossed version, like uh, like James G is doing with like oh, yeah. the eyes stuff. Like I think round it off. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, that'd be wicked. I wonder if I could do that. I'm going to ask. I'm calling the printer in a bit about it to talk about the spot gloss. So Perfect. I'll ask if we can emboss the. <laughs> that would that would be amazing. Probably I mean... be incredibly expensive and put the price up to James Jean levels. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, <laughs> nobody will buy that. Uh, they will. Come on, it's you. <laughs> yeah, but it's not that every everything everywhere all at once, is it? Not that. That's true. But you you've seen That's the movie now, right? Yeah, it's a really good movie. Would you would you love to do a poster for that, by the way? Or is it done? Basically, it's done. I, it's re that is that is everything that poster with the googly eyes that he did. Uh, that's true. That's true. I mean, I I have seen I have seen other attempts at at everything ever at once, but still not. I would go. Me. I'd go minimalist and do like a donut or something. You know, <laughs> just in the middle. <laughs> yeah, just that and the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. It's the only way, other other way I could uh, do it because the black donut looks a bit like an eye. You could do it as a googly eye or something. That's the only. 
Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, yeah, so th- this this comes out on Wednesday, not the typical um, uh, Vice Press Day, uh, because of the movies. Uh, what was it? Uh, in in movie movie. Yeah, see you next Wednesday is in, like it's a fake movie that's in a lot of John Landis movies in the background. So in American Wealth in London, mm-hmm. it's being shown at one of the cinemas. There's a poster of it in trading places, etc. I think it's been in some other movies. Like I think it's in some Guillermo del Toro ones as well. Maybe. Right. Don't quote uh, me on that. Sure. But I think it probably is. So I'm going to say it is. It's in a Guillermo del Toro movie like a Hellboy or something. Yeah, okay. See you next Wednesday, and and it's just like um like an in joke. But then I thought, oh, well, we'll release it on Wednesday, so I can say see you next Wednesday. And like two people were like, oh, I don't know what it is. And everyone <laughs> else was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, if you if you know, you know, no. True. True. Um, and what else is coming up uh, for you in the future? Like advice, you got you got some teases for us. Big Lebowski. Hmm. Uh. A science fiction movie that's one of the biggest and best science fiction movies um, ever. 2001? Okay, that's great. Not 2001. <laughs> Although I would do 2001. I might I might do that at some point. Um, and then um, a Sam Raimi movie. Okay. Doctor Strange again? <laughs> no, go on that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Okay, okay. I'll, I'm I'm excited for uh, some new stuff that's coming out, and we will definitely um, talk about it on the open channel. So, if you want some more insight on what Matt and the gang thought about um, Thor, then uh, tune in to the latest episode that came out on Friday. We talk in full length, spoiler length, uh, about the yeah. movie, and yeah, we had a good time and enjoyed it very much. I don't understand the pile on at all on that movie. It's yeah. like okay, yeah, it's not the best movie ever, and it's not the best Marvel movie ever, but it is not bad, and it is not in the bottom of those films. Definitely not. All. I mean, I I've seen you uh, posted like that. Some person was like um, talking about the ice cream shop. What? What? Yeah, I saw this. Like somebody was furious about the. The infinity cones because it's like um offensive to like people who died or but, turned to dust. And it's like, yeah, it's a film, it's not real. It's like first also, first of all that. And second of all, I mean the infinity gauntlet it, or it doesn't belong to Thanos. No. It's it's more people had the gauntlet. It's just like a little thing in the background, you know? It's yeah. fine. Oh, yeah. Some people need to chill. <laughs> it's going it's going that way where people are sort of feeling that sort of ownership so fans initially i think with the mcu stuff mm-hmm. were just happy that it was happening and we were just like oh wow this is so cool we're getting this mm-hmm. and then as it's gone on it's sort of gone like star wars where a lot of fans um, feel like they've got ownership of it so then when you get presented with something that wasn't what you were expecting mm-hmm. you just get angry and you just think it's awful but i I've always liked when things are different to what I was expecting because it's kind of like more interesting to me. If you yeah. go in and it's just what you expected, then it's kind of like, okay, cool, that's what I was expected. Yeah, it's like I... the, the, the when the, whenever they've gone against the grain and done surprising things, it's always been really good. I think like doing the dust at the end of Infinity War, that was like a huge thing. Mm. Nobody knew was coming, you know? Yeah, and uh, also like... I have seen people in my bubble that have rated the movie like one and a half stars out of five. And I was like, why? It's not a bad movie. It worked. It worked yeah. totally fine. So it's, but it's, a- it's, it's hard. I can understand because you want to take it um, on its own merits, but it's also the way the MCU uses it. It's like, what's it going to lead up to? And because that film doesn't really do that hmm. other than like the end, end credits and stuff. People are like, well, why should I waste my time watching it? Instead of just thinking it's got a nice message. I mean, it set, film. and as we talked about it, set up, set up the gods and everything and gave us a more yeah. clear picture on where it's going. So after the fact, watching it, it, I think it makes sense. And I think it works better. I, if, I, if I see it again, I might even like it more than before. I think, I think that I am going to go see it again to just either cement the fact that I really loved it because I love that kind of cheesy sci-fi film mm. or um, if I think, oh, actually, it does have problems and I was just enjoying it so much that I didn't care. Mm. 
But to be honest, if people don't like it, it's fine. It's just like this sort of extremely angry online response to stuff. Yeah. Worst movie ever. And it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're, okay. they're those people. Always, it's not. They're always the loudest. Yeah. It's sad, but okay. But anyways, um, yeah, I guess we're through here and we're going to move over to James and we're going to see how many hops and approved we're going to get out of him today. And I better get one. I better get one for mine. He That's said, I'm I, saying. Did there's something. Maybe not. I bet you he doesn't like the US one as much. There's something planned, though. I don't know oh, if, really? you, if you guys talked about it. He said something, but there's something planned. Double approved. <laughs> <laughs> we, I would like that. <laughs> we, we're going we're gonna to do something. <laughs> Yeah. You you will see. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Thanks, Matt, for coming on Cheers, and talking you. about your posters. And uh, we see each other soon. Uh, this uh, this week is also coming out uh, another uh, podcast for the Open Channel. So check out the latest one with Thor and then check out the new one. All right, guys? Do it. Over to James. And we're here we are with uh, Mr. James Hobson back again from his um, uh, Sleeping Beauty sleep <laughs> because mm. it's way too hot. You are melting. Your equipment is melting. Um, do I have the high ground here? It's a, it's a yeah, but then I'll turn into Vader, so, you know. Oh, that's true. That's Unlucky. True. That's true. That's true. Uh, about, by the way, I uh, I finished uh, the, the thumbnail artwork already. Did you like your placement this week? Uh, yes. I'm trying to think about who I was. Should I give you a hint? Yeah. I'll be back. Oh, I remember. No, no you remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. And you spend all your time on the thumbnails, I think. Yeah, that's that's my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah make, it's probably my favorite to part. Make you, yeah. To make you laugh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It try, works. try to give joy to the people. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Matt this week as well? Uh, Matt is Dracula. Mm. I think it's very fitting. I got like where he's like pointing <laughs> and then it's like it's right fitting. there. It's very fitting from a character point of view. Is that what you're trying to say? Tom? I, no, 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 no. I mean, he calls himself grumpy, so I guess maybe <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be excited. We're going to talk about all the great art that has... Uh, um, has come out and has uh, or will be coming out because there's uh, some previews of SDCC releases in here um, that will hit soon, but not yet. And uh, you can check them out in this episode. So stay tuned for that. And we're going to start off with the, our artist um, focus here. And first one is none other than Boss Logic. And he made a couple of Thor uh, Love and Thunder posters. And this one by Frost, I really had to laugh because I enjoyed this one so much because this was really funny when he when they did it in the movie. Uh, so this is a joke. If you have to see the movie, you know uh, why it's so lot. And I, I just had to put it in there because I thought it was really ridiculous. You're right. You're right. It's utterly ridiculous. It didn't didn't get you to laugh, huh? Mm, it got me to laugh in the movie. Um, okay. At least something. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is this is fun, isn't it? This this reminded me of the scene, so I had to laugh again. <laughs> so, yeah, it's typical boss logic stuff. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving over to Mr. Butcher Billy and his Stranger Things for um, artwork, and uh, yeah, this one is very old school ish, and uh, there's also. Uh, Butcher Billy and Kyle Lambert, they did a lot of um, artwork for the show, right? The official key art, right? Yeah, so Kyle did a lot of the um, sort of like key art stuff. And then this uh, this is like secondary. Mm -hmm. um, you can buy these posters from the Netflix website now. Exactly. Well, these are like pretty, pretty good posters. Um, so head, you know, yeah, so head over there. Intense value. So head over there and go get them because uh, there are a bunch of really great ones in there and you shouldn't miss. And uh, yeah, so much for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I post it for each episode if, if people haven't seen them. Um, yeah. So yeah, each chapter, whatever. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Indeed. And uh, moving over to Chris Towner, who did an under the skin poster, which is uh, really cool. I like the complexity and this kind of torn look and like the background 
with the space in, in the background of the background. And I think this turned out really well. Yeah, it's quite similar colors to the Mondo uh, print that came out. So mm. I think it, it, you know, it maybe suffers by, um, by the fact that they both came out at the same time. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. I like the I like the burning image that hasn't really been done mm -hmm. that much with uh, with posters. Yep. All right. And then we got Ivan Quin uh, Ivan Quinette who did Dirty Harry, who did us dirty with that Harry. And uh, yeah, this uh, is a classic Clint Eastwood poster. I love the like the the, the painterly approach on this one, and uh, also the like finer illustrated parts within the silhouette. And I think that's a cool poster. Pretty good job. This is the first approved of the week. There we go. Hops Hops number approved. one. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. It's the like. It's mainly because of the colors in the the lower part of mm. the image. I think that they're, they're so they are perfect, Tom. Perfect. So one point. Okay, so if you want to, it's like desaturated, like of of the periods. Um, it's good. It's good shit. If you want to see some perfect artwork, this is where you should look, people, for these kind of colors. Uh, next up, we have Not for every movie. Was that but like? <laughs> Not for every movie, but I, no, I mean for this, for this and like particular style. With the, yeah, with the beige, like it works really well, and also with the um, with the typography as well, mm -hmm. it looks class. All right, then we have Fulma illustration, and uh, this is Edward Scissorhands got uh, Winona Ryder kind of portrait art here, and um, yeah, love the pink hues on that one uh, instead of the white. Yeah, I yeah I picked this one up like kind of like last minute and and put it in, so it's it's approved by me. Um, okay, it's, I put the stamp, yeah. You put the stamp, man. I'm just asking. Yes, I'm just good. asking. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a proper approved. Okay, I think this is great. I don't like Edward Scissorhands is one of my favorite films, and there aren't enough like top end mint approved posters of it. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah this one's this one's awesome i i love it i can't even like pin down why i like it so much okay like the pink i don't think you'd see in many edward scissorhands posters mm -hmm. but this just kind of works for me it has that like magic which is the best part of edward scissorhands that some posters um don't seem to be able to kind of catch not even durio's I, d I think durio's edward Sazans is probably one of its weakest posters okay. in my opinion okay. um this one like just captures winona like great i'd love to have that on my wall okay so uh full more illustration if people like would be interested in a reverse commission then get in touch and maybe we'll make it happen I don't know. <laughs> all righty there you heard it here first uh, next up is uh, Garvin Grant. I'm sorry, buddy. I We kind of missed you last week with uh, your beautiful Kill Bill Volume 2 a print. I love this one. I love the lighting on this one, the scene and like the, the subtle designs and like this kind of raw shack um, silhouettes uh, in, in the background there. This this is a great poster. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, look, we got a visitor. <laughs> Mia like this one, obviously. So maybe it's a Mia approved. Okay. Um, I don't know why it didn't. Um, why we didn't sort it last week. I, th um, I think we had like we was we had a couple. Was it Thor or something like that? Some some other um, same um, IPs. And so I so I jumped up and down to like uh, uh, to to the IPs. And then I guess we I, I the excuses are coming out now. Oh. No, it's just a it's a it's not an excuse. It's a mistake on my hand. I'm sure I saw it in uh, in all the files. Yeah, it was uh, it was in there. Week. But as I said, like like people, this this is how it works in the background. A little background information here. Whoa. Um, we we have. Gonna save, we're supposed to save this for the DVD. <laughs> hey, come on! It's a little insight here. We have like folders, <laughs> like for each gallery, and then we have like the the artist folder, and then we uh, have all the names in there, um, and we we sort it by artist names, not by property. 
or like like i don't know so and i think last week we had a bunch of uh i don't know let's let's say it was thor and then we had a bunch of thor posters in there and then uh i had to jump between like i don't know boss logic and vlad rodriguez <laughs> and then garvin being in the middle kind of like was skipped because i moved on to the wrong one so it's definitely my fault but now cool. it's here. It's a great poster. I shared it before even on Instagram. So this is definitely approved on my end. Oh, by the way, I didn't share the Matt Ferguson the whole time. <laughs> Why didn't you say anything? Jay Sorry? Jay oh. <laughs> Jay <Jay> to James. <laughs> I, um, I didn't even notice that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a uh, yeah, really, really cool poster. Um kind of really sticks in the mind yeah uh i've already approved so many so far but yeah what the hell we'll just chuck them out then they'll mean <laughs> they'll become absolutely meaningless as opposed to just slightly meaningless. i mean it's maybe it's just a good week how about that yeah, I mean, how about that strong it's strong work at the moment isn't it tom These, yeah it's it's less work. Pretty good. it's less work but it's all pretty strong and I yeah. think next one is we'll we'll gather another approval right here because next one is Mr. Greg Ruth with this heat poster and I think this is just incredible. I mean, three hundred bucks for an AP is fine because the poster is that great in my opinion, but I didn't have it, <laughs> so I'm sad. Yeah, this is awesome. It's gonna be uh, one of those grails in the future. So yeah, one of one of the ones we missed again. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah, <laughs> a beautiful piece. I'm just um, going to do this. Right. Yeah, well done. <laughs> totally. Yeah, this is this is, this is one of my. I mean, and I I really want. I I love Greg style, and especially when he does this. A double... I love Greg. <laughs> also, Greg, I love Greg, man. <laughs> Wasn't it? I I love you, Greg, Ruth, Morris, or what is it? The the movie with with Jim Carrey. But anyways. Um, yeah, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. I love you. No, Philip Morris. Cool. I love you, Philip Morris. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I mean, I love the details in it. Like the, like, like, um, uh, Greg said on his, uh, on his post uh, about it in his fan group uh, that he has like coffee stains and they're actual coffee stains, like from like, like, like detective files at the bottom there. And also had he like took out like the 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 type the the typewriter style from that time or whatever they use or computer style they they, they had typewriter files or print files, but like has this like old feeling to it like old police file feeling, and I think that this turned out really well. It gave this just the 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 artwork gave it a very good frame, and I think this is yeah this is definitely yeah. a grail for the future. Yeah. Don't, I guess I've never really noticed like type work and stuff in a lot of Greg's work, but it's got it. Yep. It's it's, it's perfect. Yep. It's really great. Damn him. Damn. Damn. Him. <laughs> Why is he so good? <laughs> yeah. Too much talent. Uh, yeah, man. But anyways, <laughs> great job, Greg. And we're moving over to Jeff Poitiers. Poitiers. I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, maybe uh, Jeff will tell us in a comment. And uh, this is uh, Mandy, Jeff. And I think I really like this one. Love the colors on this one. Love the yeah. the the way the, the, the skull or death and Nicolas Cage are kind of opposite in this one, but still in, in his head kind of way. Yep. Yeah, there's a nice bit of concept that's gone into that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been so much Mandy artwork, obviously, uh, with like the Poster Spy book coming out. But this one's... Uh, this one's right up there. It's cool. Really like the colors. Yeah, same. Also love very, like, very nice. this this drawing style because like he looks like uh -huh. like watery and uh, this this cool. Yeah, no, it works really well. Mm -hmm. It's 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 not the most like uh, complicated effect to create, mm -hmm. but I guess you could like overuse it. This here, I think it's been done just right. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good stuff. All right, then next up, Miss, Mr. Keith Goulet and the Outwaters. I think this turned out really well, graphic design wise. I think that's a good piece of artwork for uh, the Outwaters and um, just the subtle lighting on the face there and the, the, the title treatment going darker and darker. So that's great. 
yeah, that's nice. It's a nice play, play on the word dark. Obviously, yeah. don't know the film. Um, but yeah, good, like solid. Is it? Is it like from the seventies, eighties? The Outwaters, the movie, you mean? Yeah. I think that's his style in terms of what he does, but most of the time, well, let me let me let me Google it for you. But you might be correct. Just the the credits look like um, no, it's from twenty twenty two. Okay, it, it looks like retro. Maybe it's set then. I don't know. It just has that retro feel with the titles. Maybe, but it's yeah, it's uh, it plays in a what four travelers encounter menacing phenomena while camping in a remote stretch of the Mojave Desert. There you go. There you go. Yep. Yep. Good. Good. Good work. Great work. Next up, we have Marie Beaujolais back, and uh, she did a Dune piece, which is very cool. It's very cool. Love her style. Her work. Yeah, she's she did a con recently, so like there's been a load of work coming out. Yeah. Um, she was one of those artists when I first got into, like, illustrating sort of like posters mm -hmm. her style was sort of like around everywhere her work was all, all around everywhere so it's been really good to see it again yep and it's been great like she did that rebel helmet everything everywhere um mm -hmm. this one um some really cool really cool stuff i like it a lot indeed next up we have mark levy's thor for love and thunder i love that he focused on mjolnir and like the the cracks in it and then how he got back together and lighting and love the the, the red background for it and i think that's a perfect color and it pops really well with the uh lightning blue kind of yeah good job yeah it's very cool i wonder if it's been i know like uh, mark um explores like 3d quite a lot so i wonder if milner has been like taken from uh, a 3d model and then painted over maybe it looks really good and yeah it's really interesting to see the red yeah like, it makes it stand out amongst quite a lot of other yeah, it makes it pop places. So, yeah yeah huh? good all righty next up also a really cool idea here is by matt needle and he did three days of the connor and i think this is a really cool poster in terms of the um idea because of the the feathers standing on the logo of the CIA and the bullet going through, I think this is top work. Top work, always good stuff um, from Matt. Mm -hmm. Like good concept, always like super clean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like s super clean, gritty visuals. Yep. You know, it's like simple but gritty. Exactly. Um, his stuff is super good, always always good yep that's correct uh we also have melissa shipley on with her note poster i've never heard of her before but i love this artwork for nope and i can't wait for the movie and uh yeah this is this is really great yep this is another one i kind of like uh banged into the files at the last minute i saw it i think yesterday yeah i was i was about to like also do that because i saw it and i saw it it's already in there <laughs> There you go. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Really sticks in sticks in the memory banks. Exactly. Really good colors mm -hmm. with the gradient. It's like a gradient map, probably. But very cool. Very cool. Uh, then we have uh, Double Bill, uh, Nick Charge doing Bone Tomahawk. And this is uh, the one version we have here. And uh, this is my favorite from the two. I really enjoy the colors in this one and like the the, the skull obviously in the, at the bottom there and the, the writers in in the back. I think that works really well with the with the bone tomahawk there. Let's have a look at the, the other one. Let's have a look at the other one. This is more. I like the colors in this one and like the 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 frame he used here, but I have to say, I'm sorry to say that Nick, but Kurt Russell looks a little off here. Because he's got blood, but he looks like 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 squished together somehow. You know what I mean? Maybe, yeah, maybe. That's my only um, only thing that I can't unsee from this poster. But I love the rest. But that's why I have to give it to the other one because the the the, the first one is uh, perfect in this whole idea and composition. Yeah, I kind of like applaud the idea of this one 
Um, but I think the other one has been executed a little bit better, like you said. Mm-hmm. But hey, it is sometimes what it is. Yeah, producing two pieces for one movie at the same time is pretty good too. Yeah. And then we have also another one by Nick, and he did the Layered Butter Modern Horror issue, and this turned into a poster as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, we got some classics right there. We got Hereditary, uh, The Lighthouse, Midsommar, and uh, The Witch. Yeah, modern classics of horror. Yep, yep, yep. He's, yeah, very, very cool. Layered Butter putting this out, I think. It's a, it's a screen print, maybe. Yeah. Did I see that right? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Interesting. All right, then we have yeah. uh, some Phantom City Creative Band uh, um, tour posters for Mertley Crew. And uh, yeah, this one is uh, pretty dope. <laughs> I like this one because of the colors and like the the dynamite kind of concept of it. Yeah, that's very good. Surprise, like when you see stuff like this, you're like, why didn't I think that? Or why didn't someone else think of that before? Mm-hmm. Um, that's what Phantom City really good that's that's their big selling point for me it's like they take like a visual idea visual concept that's basically kind of simple Mm -hmm. in that you you think why had no one ever thought of that before they just they just do it perfectly um and they've done it once again with a the gig poster indeed indeed Next up, we have Stefan Push, and uh, Stefan did a Stand By Me poster here, and I think this one is really cool. It is very elegant and simple, but also tells a story and is meaningful. Yep, completely iconic um, image, like, but just seen from a different kind of angle and very brave Mm -hmm. use of negative space. I... I totally dig this kind of stuff. It's exactly the, the sort of thing that I kind of like like to do myself. Um, Are you approving done this? perfectly or not? Yeah, yeah, definitely approved this. I've totally forgotten about this. <laughs> totally forgotten. <laughs> okay, yeah, should we re really good. should we reapprove something? Nah, let's just carry on. Okay, okay. And last but not least, we have a double p- a double bill here by Vlad Rodriguez. This is Terminator Two Judgment Day. We put James's head on. Uh, on the T-1000 and uh, this one looks pretty cool when you pair it with Terminator 1 on the other side, same kind of style and yeah, typical Vlad style as you can see also in the background with John Wick, it kind of goes even in the same color directions there and yeah, this uh, is a, it's a very cool double bill here again. Yeah, it's pretty full on. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd obviously never get uh, a license piece looking like this so um I guess it's always good for like private for private pieces to go in this direction because it's sort of you're never gonna get that's licensed obviously with mm-hmm. with Arnie's head. Um Exactly. I don't I can't make my mind up over this. In what way? It doesn't say Terminator or Terminator two to me. Um I mean, it's got all the like the, the the little ideas in there, obviously, and the the it's just the I don't know head up display in terms kind of, of thing. Yeah, I get it. For me, like I don't, my eyes aren't led to one thing. Terminator obviously has like the T eight hundred Mm-hmm. That's the main focus, and then you're kind of like led around, unveiling, like revealing. Yeah, for me it was oh, other yeah. little bits. Do you, but, um, do you mean the T T800 in terms of Arnie, or in terms of yeah, the Arnie? It's like the first thing that okay. um, I'd pick up yeah. on, and then Same. you start to see in the background. There's yeah, yep. I don't know, man. Can't make my mind up. Literally. All right. Fair enough. Don't fair know. enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, next up we have uh, Bottleneck Gallery. Bottleneck Gallery has a release uh, with Kevin Wilson and he did Dracula as a regular edition, a screen printed 24 by 36 edition of 150 and a co-release with Vice Press. And then we also have a variant, which is probably not an edition of 150 and I forgot to change it, probably 7,500. I don't know, somewhere around there. I'm sorry, people, that I don't have the exact numbers. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, people. 
this is a great piece i really like this one got bella in there i love the variant more than i do the the reg but it got kevin's signature style the reg one i think this is this is where when i see one without names i would know this is kevin for the reg yep 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 yeah use of colors isn't it like yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah, it continues his Universal Monster series as well, mm -hmm. um, with that main character and then a frame kind of around the outside. Exactly. Then we have. Uh, yeah, I yeah also I I think I prefer the uh, variant on that one. All right. Alrighty. Then we have. It's not going to. What's it? Because I'm not... sorry that I interrupt you. I thought you were done every time. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done with you, Tom. Thank you. I'm done with Mondo. <laughs> yeah, it's not vibe like. It has vibrancy in the Dracula. It's not enough vibrancy. All right. Overall. All right. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. It's work better. There's still, there's still for room of improvement. In vibrancy. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Mark Chilcott. He did a severance piece, which is uh, is kind of Mark style, but also isn't. It's something different from what we usually see in from the gallery work. This is 20 by 40 inch, and this is an additional 40. And yeah, Severance uh, got nominated for a couple Emmys, I guess. And uh, this is a great show. If you haven't watched it, go watch it, because then this image will make so much sense. I can't be. I can't afford another bloody subscription service. <laughs> Don't share it. Don't share it. Well, if, if you can account... <laughs> then I'll definitely be down for watching this because it sounds it sounds brilliant. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Mark Mark can do any style. I think he's like in the, another one of those illustrators like mm -hmm. Andrew Swainson who it feels can just do any style. It feels a little bit like uh, Scott C. This kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, right. it's kind of like a more saturated Scott C, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, with but with a little bit more detail. All right, then we have Tom Walker, and uh, yeah, this is a Stranger Things piece he did. Hellfire Club, 18 by 24 inches, and an edition of 100. And yeah, this is just is pretty red. It's pretty red. Exactly. Yeah, not in not in any way linked to the Netflix show. Yeah, this is for the for the club in New York, the Hellfire Club. Yeah. For licensing reasons, <laughs> that is nothing to do with the really popular show. I wondered. Yeah. I wondered, by the way, why the 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 dice at the bottom says twelve and not eleven. Uh, good point. Uh huh. That would have been a little bit too close, wouldn't it? <laughs> then people would get calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tricky one, handled well. But yeah, Tom, if you see this, maybe you can help us out here. Yeah, is it? I mean, it, it reminds me. It re, it reminds me of of something I've just watched on TV. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Tom, get in touch. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we're moving over to cover art, and we have uh, Nikki Barker doing a Target exclusive for Doctor Strange. Um, mom for the mom for the mom movie dr strange mom movie <laughs> dr strange's mom mm. uh, you would have enjoyed that more wouldn't you tom it wasn't that bad but it wasn't that good either okay all right yeah but artwork is uh pretty tight so that's cool yeah it's superb nikki love nikki work. can draw she she's fantastic and yeah i should have put the other files in showing all, all the rest of the the kind of like that would have been great packaging it would have been good wouldn't it? it would have been really helpful for this uh cover art section but all of it's really cool <laughs> yeah so to to get a little bit more on uh some other cover art where we can see more is by robert bruno's warrior and I love how he did the, the cover art and then put like the the, the slip case on it like having the the cage I kind of like the the, the 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 mesh of the net and i think this looks really great and the final art of uh, for the cover and the back there is uh, looking awesome uh, robert's signature style here at work and yeah warrior just a great movie so can't go wrong with that 
Have you seen that movie? Edgerton. No, I haven't. It's, I don't think I would like it. I, I don't yeah. like people hitting people. Um, yeah, but it's more about like brotherhood and like achieving the impossible. It's great. Great stuff. Cool. Original. Original. It is. I, I know it's not. Yeah, but sometimes um, you don't <laughs> managed, need original concepts to make a I'm good managed, movie. I'm only joking, Tom. I'm, I'm totally. You know, it was a good movie. Like a top gun. It's about people like reaching an end goal. Like, but it hit, it hit the fields. It, it is good drama, though. It's good drama. Not this. Yeah. Not, yeah, Tom not Hardy's top fantastic, isn't he? Yeah. Top, top Gun's like exceptional drama. So, yeah. Um, Joel Edgerton, is he related to the other Edgerton? Huh? Or is it Joel Edgerton? Not thinking. It is. Of. It is. It is uh, Uncle uh, Owen and Aunt Peru. Joel Edgerton. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that now. Looking at the artwork. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> not enough of him in uh, in the Star Wars. I thought he was good. He's a good actor. Yeah, he is. I really like him. No. Yeah. So check this movie out. It's worth your time. I promise. Have you seen RR yet? By the way. Like you promised. No, Tom, I haven't seen RRR. Yep. <laughs> Please I've watch got it. The right, I've got the right file now, though. Um, this is... So, let me tell you this, though. Mr. Mr. James Henshaw, he watched it, and he enjoyed it. I'm sure I will enjoy it, but I couldn't... I just couldn't deal with the the version on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. The dub version, because ugh, dub versions are horrible. It's okay. I get it. Deal with it. Like a different performance from what is on screen. Like, who wants to watch that? All right, moving over to Dark Ink. And Dark Ink is going to bring you Dave Pertle's Treehouse of Horror 4, screen printed 12 by 36 inches, an edition of 250. And then we also have Devin Shuffler, who did at last we will have Revenge as a Litho, edition of, uh, edition of 295, 16 by 24 inches. And I think this one is. Uh, it's kind of an homage, I would say, to Greg Ruth. <laughs> oh, you think? Just the double exposure. Just with the with the double exposure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you getcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always find that I always find that like scene where he's on the bike, just like mm-hmm. borderline funny, because it looks. I don't know, it just looks really awkward to me. The bike looks weird. Yeah. Bike looks weird, and the way he's kind of riding it, because it's just like so kind of like backwards, and it doesn't look quite like it's made for a human to ride on. <laughs> it's, it's like it's so it's sci-fi that it's enough. practical. Yeah. It's just not really practical like design. <laughs> it, might, yeah. it looks right for the world, but it's yeah, okay, funny because okay. like it's just so back in. That scene just makes me laugh. We have, even though it's like I mean, supposed to be super powerful. It's isn't like, there this uh, BMW bike kind of like this? This has like the 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 top. You know what I mean? It kind of looks like that, I'd say. Well, like, yeah, they're very European, aren't they? Those ones that like curve over the top. Yeah, sort of. they don't have that many, but I think it kind of reminded me of that. I don't know. It they just have, looks weird. That. By the way, they have a very cool electrical BMW bike, which I really dig. But it's like has it has too much power. I would have to get a like a, a bicycle license, uh, a, a motorcycle license. I mean. Yeah, electrical. Uh, we're, going, we're going completely off topic now, but yeah, <laughs> electrical bikes and cars have a lot of uh, acceleration, don't they? Yeah, you can imagine a bike; you would just be like forced backwards really quickly. Um, but do, do they like have they... that in the in the in the uh, in the UK? Like we have like rental, we have like electric scooter, like like actual Vespa, like an e Vespa kind of. Um. Probably the wrong person to ask because I don't live in a city, but I don't think we're as forward thinking as Germany. I wouldn't say that, but um... <laughs> I would. <laughs> okay, you haven't lived here. <laughs> well, you, you sure haven't lived here. No. <laughs> when you come to visit, you'll see how backwards this country is. I mean, I've are. been there, but I, I mean, yeah, September people. I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out for you. There's going to be an investigative report on that. <laughs> Public transport in, in the UK by drop. Mm-hmm, exactly. Can't wait. Okay. <laughs> Next up, we're going to go over to Grey Matter Art. 
who has a three pieces with Miko Suoyan and uh, it's called it's the Marvel Standoff series and this is uh, these are all G clay 60 by 24 inches an edition of 150 each this is the set yes you can see all the all the opponents uh, in their reflection of their spidey eyes <laughs> and yeah interesting comic book art pieces yeah, should have been called Spidey Eyes. <laughs> Spidey Eyes. Spidey Eyes. Okay. I like the Spider Man one, especially, actually. It's quite good. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, next up is a Hero Complex, and we got a bunch of pieces by Dakota Randall. In this case, uh, this is Andy for Parks and Recreation, Chris Pratt, and then we have uh, also um, April here. And then we have Leslie and obviously fan favorite, uh, Ron. These are great pieces as always in the head series that uh, he does. And um, this is all good. All great. <laughs> this is all good. <laughs> One of my favorite TV shows. This um, is all good. Yes, this is this is all good. I love them. Yeah, I love them. Okay. Very much. Alrighty. Then we have. Oh, I'll approve them, of course. Oh, okay, so let's put the stamp of approval on here. Just need little Sebastian. <laughs> little Sebastian. Oh yeah, good times. Good times. Yeah. Uh, then we have Denny Schlitz, and uh, he did uh, some Lord of the Rings stuff. Uh, this is a top of Gilead. And then I think we had this one before, right? With the Lord of the Rings one, but I... yeah, I think we've seen that. Maybe it was just pretty, a double pack pretty, packaging here. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah, that some... one's approved. I didn't approve it last time. Okay, let's. I just Pops gotta approve both of them. Yeah. <laughs> just chuck the approval around because that's what we do now. Look, look under your seat. There's some approval. Everyone gets an approval. <laughs> you get an approval. Your breakfast. They got an approval today. Well done. <laughs> Alrighty, and then we have a artist that I have not known before, and uh, he's called Robert Springett, and he is uh, calling himself a very huge movie geek and um, maker of um, movie geek and maker. That's what he calls himself. So let, let's not get this wrong here. And uh, yeah, he's uh, been collecting movie props, and this is where the idea comes from. Uh, comes from. He is originally trained as an um, illustrator, and then he put these kind of like still lifes together where he has drawn the um, uh, still lifes for this is uh, which one is that indie one I think yeah right Temple of Doom huh is it tell me is it Temple of Doom but is it I think I've watched I think it's the James first it's the James. first one so I'm not sure it's the first one is not the first one it's called Indiana Jones one exactly yes that's what we're gonna call it now oh my god we are so bad <laughs> It's just called Indiana Jones. It was the original. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, this is um, yeah, this is uh, really cool. And he paints and oils, so that's awesome. And he's trying to get like the because he was inspired by Ghostbusters two and the painting and stuff like that. And he wanted to use the technique and to try to um, make kind of like pop culture art uh, in this kind of stuff. Basically, what we did for our wonderful film on canvas book here. And uh, this goes along these lines. And there's uh, one more here. This is this is also Indiana Jones. I, I'm not sure. No, no, never mind. It's the Goonies. What I'm talking Goonies. about. Goonies. Yeah, it's the Goonies. And Goonies one. Yeah, Goonies one. <laughs> Jesus. And then last but not least, we have uh, some Ray here. This is the Force Awakens. Star Wars. Yeah, I think four, five. I love this one really. Six, seven, seven, <laughs> Star Wars seven. I'm glad you can count. <laughs> yeah, I was having to go through the films in my head. <laughs> so it just become a bloody blur of like stars. Yeah, but I think these turn out really great, and uh, these are available uh, via Hero Complex Gallery. So yeah, get get your fill on still lives because you like those painterly paintings from the 1600s. <laughs> They're cool. All right. Next up, we nice. we have uh, the QR corner. James, you want to take over for this one? I suppose. Um, if I have to, yeah. I'm sorry that I yeah. <laughs> that I give you so much to do. <laughs> Tom, 
exhausting. <laughs> um, so this is a film I have no idea about uh, called Don't Worry Darling. Tom, do you know anything about this? Mm, nope, I don't think so. Let me let me Google it while you talk about it. So it's a film. From 22. Um, it's a... Olivia Wilde. It's a new Olivia Wilde movie. Oh, now I remember. You go, yeah. It'll be good. Um, yeah, this is a teaser poster and I thought it was very interesting. Mm-hmm. It's about him. And made me want to know. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you the synopsis here, the logline. It's a, a psychological thriller about a 1950s housewife whose reality begins to crack, revealing a disturbing truth underneath. Yeah, you can see there's a little man on the right, just like, or a woman peering through uh, the glass. Yeah, and like the the plane crashing, but it looks like it fall it fell through water. Also underwater. Yeah. Yep. I think it's cool. I think it's very nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And it's not. It's also you know just not full bleed image. There's a nice. There's a nice bit of uh, nice bit of white space under there. Just looks nice and white and clean mm-hmm. and so like everything thing. is perfect but there are there are things that are not quite right exactly Ugh. all right i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm so freaking boring no i'm, I'm uh, stretching kind of like felt like stretching cool good for you next up Very healthy. uh this one's all right uh, i was just running out of stuff to put in so i thought i'd put frame <laughs> Gray man in. <laughs> this one's all right. I don't even know why I put it in here. <laughs> yeah. uh, looking at yeah. it today, I was like, well, it's sort of all right, isn't it? Um, it uses that kind of smudge effect that you yeah, put on stuff to make it look slightly interesting. But then, yeah, that's it's me. obviously the black is now gray. That's me yeah. making a movie poster by mistake. <laughs> Did you do this, Tom? <laughs> I, smudged, uh, I smudged over the... Oh, just... you smudge. You're a smudger. Oh, you're one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought it was all right. It looks more interesting than a lot of stuff that um, will come out. It's supposed to be like a universe thing again. Like an action universe. Spy, Bond, series type thing. Born, trilogy, whatever. Yeah. But it uses all of those like similar tropes, doesn't it? You know, mm-hmm. famous man looking off to the side mm-hmm. so you're like oh a bond or a born cool <laughs> i'll watch that all right next up <laughs> yeah rosa Russo brothers but yeah i thought it was i thought it was fine like all instead right. of the black you put gray and that automatically makes it look interesting against the red okay then we have another man looking to the side here on our next poster <laughs> <laughs> but yeah this one doesn't look like a bond or a born because of the the floatiness and the candle um uh, this one is by uh, Alexander Valijewski. Uh, Valijewski, there you go. Yeah, and I don't know if he's, we showed it last time, but this week can't remember. we're just going to do it again because it's really good. Yeah, to have this as, as key art is uh, pretty brave. Obviously shows what kind of film it is as well. Pretty brave, indie, cool film. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. And then uh, I can't remember if we've had this one before either. Said, hold up, hold up. Is it? Is that by the way? Is he burning the candle on both ends? Is that what we're saying? Because he's working a lot as a doctor because they're gonna work you to the bone. Is that the idea here? Yeah. Don't know, Tom. Have to watch the film to find out. Okay. Moving on to the black phone. Creepy dark. I think we had this one. But I'm so not there sure. you go. Got it. Got it again. <laughs> uh but uh, i didn't is I didn't it official realize... PR though yeah it is i think that's why maybe i put it in this time we might have had it as just artist work last yeah. time but then I, f- I found out that it was actually uh okay. yes yeah, official cool, cool, PR, cool, cool, cool. which is good it's a good poster all right yeah the movie's also that's good. Corner done thank goodness yeah apparently everyone seems to love it um yeah the trailer didn't look that great to me but indeed I have snake's revenge which is an addition size of uh 220 and this one is still available but the metal gear solid snake one is already sold out they are good they're good yeah oliver can draw yep i love it i love how like his art is obviously like a little bit looser 
Mm-hmm. But then it's it's like it's tight at the same time. Yeah. I, it's like and you can totally tell it's Oliver's work just by looking at it, even though it doesn't have gimmicks or anything mm. like that. Oh, I think he's he's a good dude, isn't he? He is. He is. You can check out the interview with Oliver if you're not familiar with his work and his style and what kind of person he is. We did one back uh, uh, last year, I think, or even the year before. I'm not sure, but it's it's a very good interview. Oliver is a very good person. All right, and uh, then the last piece from Mondo this week is Yuko Shimizu's Primordial 24 by 36 screen print edition of 150. Always good stuff from Yuko. Uh, beautiful piece. Mm-hmm. Someone that I actually should try and get in contact with, actually, for some, for some art, because her stuff is always just really good. Yep, indeed. Um, then we would move over to, I think, Sideshow, because, I mean, you left something more up, but we talked about it last time. Should we plug it I again? Remember. We're just going to plug it again, this one. Oh. This beautiful piece by Sam Gilby. <laughs> is there, How many are still available? Um, I think we're down to, like, for our amount, I think it's, like, 25 to 30. Uh, we had orders coming yesterday, so it might have changed. Um, All right, people. Yeah, it's so, yeah. low now. It says on the website that how many there are, I think. Go go and grab it because these are this is really cool stuff, and you will enjoy it in your um, gaming room. Yeah, they're shipping now as well, so... Um, It'll be if you if you purchase, it'll be pretty much immediate shipment on these. There you go. They look good. They're really vibrant. All right, moving over to Sideshow, and Sideshow uh, has a bunch of pieces. This is by Brian Rod, The Awakening for the Umbrella Academy, and this is 18 by 24, actual image size 14 by 20, and this is a G clay with a run of 250. I like this one composition. I got all the key characters obviously in for the Umbrella Academy. I enjoyed also the the latest um, season, season three. Was fun to watch. Can't get into it. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I have to say, I, have to <laughs> I like say, the print though. The print's good. I have to say the 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 really interesting part was the transition of uh, Ellen Page to Elliot Page, and they. Uh, put that very well into the uh, into the show season three. Really, really good TV in terms of exploring this topic. Okay. Okay. Then uh, we got. Ju- What's that? I don't know what that means. What do you mean? A- Ellen Page into Elliot Page. Ellen Page, the 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 actress, like former actress, yeah. like, and she transitioned in real life. And became Elliot Page, and they uh, oh okay they did right. that on the and show. They, they did, did that, that also. On the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I understand. Okay, perfect. Okay, this one is by George Kasudas. Uh, they were dragons. G Clay, twenty four by eighteen, and edition size of four hundred. And yeah, this this is pretty cool. I like this one that goes uh, beyond the frame there, uh, that he put in there. And yeah, George can draw that anime stuff. And like animated stuff, not anime, an- animated, George I'm sorry. Is, George is fantastic. Good dude. Uh, yeah. uh, superb dude. He did some cool pieces yeah. for you guys, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, it, he was going to do another piece for us, which looked amazing. But um, there were licensing issues with it, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully in the future, there'll be more, because we love George. Like, he's, All right. he's really good to work with, and his art is like... Pff. Phenomenal. Also, a really great artist is Mr. Kevin McGivern. He did a Harley Quinn piece, Red Flags, 18 by 24 G Clay. The actual image size is a 14 by 20, and the edition size is 300. And yeah, this one is pretty cool. The details, and he has a process on this one on his uh, YouTube, I think. So check it out or check out his page on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, really great dude. He's also in a film with Canvas book, and uh, yeah, deservedly so. Yeah, I really, really like this one. So, uh, this one is approved. Hops and boom. Approved. And boom. Boom. Goes yeah, when you diamond. look up, when you look kind of like close up mm-hmm. um, at the way like she's rendered as well, mm. it's like the perfect, perfect amount of realism to this like kind of flat color rendering. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, really great. Yeah, um, it's like 
It's incredible. He had a he he has drawn um a I think it was original I think it's original, yeah. He's drawn like a Michael Jordan kind of piece from like a photograph and like put in some mm. cool elements in there. If it wasn't six hundred dollars, I think it I would have I would have gotten it already because it's a really, really cool piece. Uh, and hey, what's Mia up? Approved. This one's me ever approved. Great. As well. And um <laughs> Speaking of originals here, uh, we're going to go over to Spoke Art, and Spoke Art has uh, a very cool show, um, which we uh, didn't sadly didn't get all the details yet, uh, but we will feature it on the next one. Uh, it will be for quite some time, and there will be also an online release. Really cool artists, I think, like 20, tw at least 20 plus artists on there. So stay tuned for that next uh, in the next weeks. Uh, but for now, we have Nick Camperoni, and he has done. Uh, Colin Robinson for what we do in the shadow archival pigment print. This is 12 by 16 and edition size of 75. But that's not all. Uh, you can also grab or, uh, original because he has done two originals of this one. And this one is spray paint, uh, a stencil spray paint collage. And um, these are two different ones, as you can see here. Uh, has done these. And uh, yeah, you can pick these up. The originals which is pretty cool um yes we have spoke art all, all of that and these uh, the call robinson and then we also have laszlo cravensworth and you got the same deal there uh this is the printed version this is one of the originals this is the other original and you can pick these up as i said over at spoke art and there will be the rest of the game for what we do in the shadows and this comes right in time because last night um, what we do in the shadows season four started and I'm super excited. I need to catch up. Yeah. One of the best shows. Definitely need to catch One up. One of the best yeah, shows. It is. Yep, yep, yep. Alrighty. So, um, how are you liking these? I'm liking them. They're not, uh, they're not approval status for me. I think I love them because they're mixed medium and, um, they're, they're, yeah, I, I would say that of all of his work, like, and it's great because it's mixed. Also interesting here is that he has done the, or he's doing like the original ones all in different sizes because it's according to the portraits in the intro where they all have different sizes. <laughs> That's cool. A little fun fact here. If you get an original, you get uh, different sizes, which is pretty cool. Very. Alrighty. And then we are almost through. And uh, we're going to move over to Vice Press as our last gallery here. And uh, first one is the Andrew Swainson Litho for his Jaws piece, 24 by 36 inches. Editions of 250, I think, is already sold out. But yeah, this is a great piece. I got an edition version, which you probably can, still can get. So grab this one for sure. And then we talk to the man himself, Mr. Matt Ferguson. Can I approve, can I approve Andrews? Again? Yeah, it's different. It's got, it's got different bits. I approved it. More details. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Bigger, better. Yeah, I mean, more still, if you approved it the first time and that was better, then it's still an approval, isn't it? Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, but that's not all. And as we talked at the beginning of the show, I uh, just wanted to point this out again here. Uh, the American Wealth in London piece. This is the rig, which looks amazing. James, you want to say something or stop me if I have to be stopped? Otherwise, then... You want me to, you want me to approve no, no, something? No, no, no. If you don't approve it, you don't approve it. I... I do approve it, but this my favorite one. Yeah, is okay, the... okay, that's just what I'm asking. Should I should I move on to the other to the variant, or should I go to the it open edition, A two print? Yeah, I actually, yeah, I do actually like that. Is actually my favorite. Okay, and do you approve this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> boom! It's Hobson approved, <laughs> and you can see that smile. Uh. Yep. Yeah, but that's not all. Good, good place though. That's not all. We also um, talked about the Thor um, Euro edition of 10 print, which is, in my opinion, very amazing. My favorite of the two. We also talked about the uh, Star Trek, <laughs> Star, little Star Trek reminder here. 
of uh, for love and uh, for Thor: Love and Thunder. And yeah, do you have a favorite from the two of them? Um, I like the first one that you showed. The Euro the, one, like the heart, the heart shaped one. Yeah. 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 Um, that one is also approved. approved. Boom! <laughs> Got the rainbow bridge there, Matt. Exactly. Approves. Yay! <laughs> Alrighty. They're both very good, though. Um, but that, uh, yeah, that one is my that one's my favorite. Awesome. Alrighty then. Uh, glad we are uh, done here, and thank you, James, for uh, doing this and approving so many posters this yeah. week. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the in- inflation that takes place in every part of our lives, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we hope uh, you enjoyed the show, and uh, let us know in the comments what was your favorite of the week, and what are you gonna get, or what did you already get um, on the gallery front. And talk to you soon in two weeks, people. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.